G'day folks, welcome back. My name's Simon and this channel is all about motorcycles, adventure, touring and camping or mad cat as I like to call it. Today, I'm sitting outside in the sun. <laughs> I like literally, I woke up at 7.30 this morning. It's a day off and it's like, oh yeah. Welcome to lockdown. Beautiful sunny day out here and uh, can't ride anywhere. Well, I can ride into town, but you know. Anyway, so today I'm going to try and fit my radiator guards from Radguard, which is a local company down in Coffs Harbour. So I'm going to try and fit these and uh, see how we go. I'm going to give it a shot. It looks like it's going to be fairly simple. I've got to pop out a couple of push pins up the, uh, the side of the radiator, take the old guard off, bolt the new guard on. But I thought I'd make a little bit of a quick video about it because uh, not everybody feels confident or comfortable to do things like that. And, uh, well, hopefully this will spur you on to want to do your own things on your own bike. There's a lot of things that I still have to learn to do on my own bike. I do my own servicing and that sort of thing, except for the big services. I take that to Honda for that, but um, I still change my oil and filter and so on every 6,000 kilometers, and I'll, I'll do a video on that one day. Um, but at the moment, though, I figured this was uh, not a bad sort of a, a start to things. And look how shiny and beautiful my Pathfinder looks. Looks lovely. Anyway. So let's get on with this, shall we? I decided to get the black one because, well, my bike's all black, so it makes sense really, right? Okay, so I've got to remove this bolt. Then I've got to take out all of the clips around here. There's a push-in clip here that pushes into a rubber grommet. There's another one of those down here. And I've got to take out the push pins down in the side here. So two, three of those. And then I should be able to remove the side shroud of the bike again and take out the screw, take out the two bolts here and put the new radiator guard on. Funny, isn't it? By the time you do a second one, you make it look easy. So make sure you keep hold of all your plastic uh, push pins because you will need them all put it back but if you follow the guide that I've put together here with the way to do it then it's not all that hard so screw from the side of the radiator which holds this plastic shroud in place here So all the bolts that hold the radiator are 10 mil, and there's four of those in total, two each side. And the bolt that holds the horn in place looks to be a 12 mil. So you will want a 10 mil socket, and if I'm correct, a 12 mil socket. Then once your horn moves out of the way, back to the 10 mil socket to remove the bottom radiator bolt. Then once that's removed, This plastic shroud actually clips in. So 
clips in on the sides here and you've got to actually move it upwards and I've got one more push pin to remove they're everywhere the damn things forgot that one so there's four push pins to remove not three and then this plastic shroud here Should then be able to lift up like that. There we go. Done. So then, take out the bolts in readiness. And if you've got the rad guard radiator, Guard. Um, it's got these bolts bolted in and they've got these little uh, push-on captive nuts and they go onto the tabs on the side of the radiator and all you have to do is slide them on until they can't slide any further and that's job done. call them M5 clip nuts. So all they are is a um, little clip with a captive nut basically or a thread moulded into it. So the right hand side is slightly more complicated simply because it does have the horn here. So you have to be able to lift it out of the way. I could probably take the horn off which might be easier. There we go, horn's off. A little bit less to put up with. And then when you put the metal radiator guard in, make sure it goes behind the plastic cowling at the top because the push pin goes into that. The top push pin, the one that I forgot, goes into that which holds it there. And it's that simple. And then your bolts. edge bolts first you may have to adjust the uh, clip nut a little bit because when you put it on it may not have lined up correctly with where you need it to and that's usually just a matter of getting something to slide it up with So it lines up in the holes. And screwing that back in. So now that these are back in, and the radiator guard is square on the radiator, you can tighten these up. So it's slightly annoying trying to get to this because I've still got my uh, my crash bars mounted on the bike. 
but that's all right. There is a will, there's a way. Then it comes to putting in the um, bolts back in to hold the radiator in place. So I want my 10 mil socket. I found on the other side that if you put in the top one first, it does make it a little bit easier. <laughs> Just because then your radiator is more lined up. And then the bottom one, I've only done them up finger tight at the moment, so I can just get everything on there. Back to the 12 mil socket to put the horn back on. So first of all, I'm going to plug the horn back in. And these plugs are fairly easy to get off if you pinch them on the sides and then you wiggle them left, right, left, right and pull up, they just pop off. Very simple. Then slide them back on until they click, which means the holes lined up. Make sure it's all lined up again. There is a little finger that sticks out. That means the horn has to be slid down to lock into position. And it's on. Screw back in the plastic shroud on the side of the radiator. Okay, so I've got everything tight. Bolts are tight for the radiator. Bolts are tight for the horn. The push pin's in at the top of the radiator. Now it's a matter of getting the shroud back on. So, because the shroud is curved, it is a bit of a pain because you've got to try and get around the uh, crash bars. However, the Ziga crash bars that I've got on here do give you enough room to do that without a problem. It's just a little bit fiddly to get back in. So one thing to make note of though, is make sure that you've got your rubber grommets in place here. There's one down the bottom and one up the top. Those rubber grommets push in with uh, little clips on the inside of the shroud. And if those clips don't lock into that, then your, radio, uh, your shroud will shake and vibrate. So this one here I found was actually pushed out a little bit, pushed through a bit, so I had to reseat it. Not a hard job though, just pull it out and uh, push it back in correctly. So if you pull the top out with your fingers a little bit, it does make it easier for it to curve around. And then it's a matter of making sure that it all lines up correctly. Pushing your front clips, your top clips. The side clips all the way down. And then this bit gets held by the push pins that go in. One bolt to go in the top. lines up Then it's a matter of putting back your three push pins. So now that the sun's actually on what I'm doing, when the push pin's in, it's a snug, flat fit. If you get something like this Allen key, you simply push it in till it clicks in like that. Then you can pull the whole unit out and then to reset it, push it back through until it sticks through like that. 
and it shouldn't go any further unless you push it rather hard. Then when you put it back into the panel, put it in place and click. Job done. So there's one that goes in the top here, underneath, one that goes in on the side here, another one that goes in on the side down the bottom here, and that's all done. So now my radiator guards are in place, metal radiator guards, as opposed to the plastic ones here that probably oh, snapped already right there with just trying to get it off. But plastic radiator guards, they'll do the job for small things, but uh, when you want to do a around the world trip, I think it's probably better to go for the stronger option. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up if you've got something out of this. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you're interested in seeing more videos on how to do things on the CRF 1100 Africa Twin.